Check one, two, checking my audio. How are my levels? Can you hear me all right? We're starting in exactly one minute. What I would like to also know is, can you hear the clicking? Adit is watching the coding train live for the first time. Welcome. Welcome to a Friday episode of The Coding Train. It has been... Oh, I just scared my poor dog, Gloria, who has been sleeping so quietly over there. And I have been very quietly sitting up here in the attic and just made a very loud hello to all of you. And she just got up from her bed and left. Oh, well. Goodbye, Gloria. You can come back. <laughs> no dog cam for today. I do have a mouse cam. Um, I see a bunch of people saying this is my first time live. Well, welcome to the first, your first, not the first live stream of The Coding Train. I don't know what number. Somebody, if actually anybody wants, from the community wants to volunteer to do this. I used to number the live streams and then I would know what number I'm on. I, I currently have no idea. <laughs> um, but uh, welcome. Um, I hate to break it to you, but um, these live streams are kind of a mess. But I hope you do enjoy this one. I have a very, very specific task that I want to do today. Um, before I do that task, though, let me quickly thank today's um, sponsor. And I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to do this. I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to press this button and oh, my mouse uh, mouse cam is right in front of it. Um, but thank you to uh, Brilliant. Uh, you should check out the um, website and app uh, Brilliant if you're interested in math and science and lifelong learning. Um, it's a wonderful um, um, website. It has a tremendous amount of courses, uh, interactive courses that uh, align with a lot of the content that I do on the coding train. Um, and uh, you can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train. And the first 200 subscribers will get 20% off. I'll come back later. There's actually a really, I just saw it on the homepage today. There's a really fun daily challenge about waves, which is very related to my nature of code, chapter three book on waves. So I'm gonna do that daily challenge uh, halfway through this um, live stream. Okay, um, back to, whoa, wrong button. Wrong button, back to here. That was, by the way, the Brilliant Neural Network course, which is excellent. Um, uh, and uh, Stig is saying, um, I'm specifically here for that mess. Never stop messing about. Yeah, this is actually some interesting feedback, not to get too immediately off on a tangent, but I have received the feedback of, as the tutorial videos get more and more produced with editing and animations, um, some of the sort of authentic elements of the original place where I started making these videos has been lost. Um, and of course, those authentic elements, I hope, are here in spades today during this live stream. But um, I am thinking about this and how to balance the desire I have for sort of higher quality video tutorials that people can get through to learn something and create a project, as well as the sort of fun mess that is often the coding train. So um, let's, uh, uh, and Arnav is saying, just realized it's been five years watching the coding train, mid-April 2016. Arnav, that's just crazy. Um, lots of stuff is coming to the coding train soon. I have all sorts of crazy plans. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that right now <laughs> because I have a very specific job that I need to do today. And um, uh, 
I don't know how well this is going to go, but let me jump right into it. Um, so it, apologies if you haven't been in a live stream before. I'm not going to spend a lot of time introducing myself or what this channel is, but I'm going to talk about something that I am participating in that's happening at the end of the month, and I have a lot of work to do for it. So and I'm, I'm like, this is really bothering me that there's this little uh, keying issue right here. Um, I will let me. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be okay with it. Um, let me jump into what I want to um, do today. So I'm going to go over here um, and I am going to open up. No, I need to use this mouse to force myself. This, by the way, is a rollerball mouse. Uh, I am going to open up the web browser and I am going to go to, oh wait, no, before I even do that, I, that's why I need to open up processing. So I'm going to open up on the desktop, computer mouse, um, mouse data collect, I think is the one I'm looking for. Mouse data collect. Um, let me just run this. So I want to be running this during the entire live stream today. This is collecting data on all of my mouse movements. I will come back to it, but I wanted to at least set this up and running um, as I'm going. So what am I doing today if I come back to the broadcast? I went back to my trackpad again. Everybody, you know, uh, uh, I, I, you know family friendly show with lots of people who are under the drinking age. So I don't want to say drink every time I go back to my trackpad, but I don't know. Uh, put a quarter in the jar and uh, donate it to a good cause every time I go back to my trackpad. Uh, let's go to a computer mouse conference. Computer Mouse Conference 2021. So the Computer Mouse Conference um, 2021, and let me just, this is a different mouse I need to use to move this, um, is a uh, conference that's be happening online. It will be hosted on this page, which I will uh, click to, um, which is uh, complicating the cuter, computer mouse. Um, here is uh, Emma, one of the organizers, along with Ashley uh, Lewis of the um, Computer Mouse Conference. You should definitely watch this, the Dada of All Demos videos, which was performed on February 21st, 2021. A Basically, almost everything that I'm doing for the Mouse Conference is uh, inspired by this particular uh, uh, performance. Um, and... <clears throat> um, so yes, here, here are the uh, conference organizers' full names, uh, Emma Jane Lewis and Emma Ray Brumel Norton. Um, so I'm doing a bunch of things. One, I'm just like an incredibly enthusiastic <laughs> and excited person about the Computer Mouse Conference. This is the second one. I just followed it online um, last year and I um, have a chance to... Um, sorry, I have a ch sorry, I'm reading the chat while I'm talking, which I'm not going to do. Um, I have a chance to participate this year. So I'm doing a couple things. One, there will be a simultaneous live stream hosted on the coding train during the conference. Um, it, uh, it's a very, uh, I don't want to say too much about it now. I'll, I'll let you find out about it as it gets announced and as we plan it, but there will be a live zine um, made by a wonderful artist um, and zine maker um, who will be uh, creating a live zine uh, during at. Um, during the conference. So you'll want to tune into the conference on the conference page where all the talks will be played, but simultaneously there will be a zine being made. Um, and then I am also working on a, a video for the conference, and I've really bitten off way more than I can chew here. You know, I am someone who has now built up a practice of being able to deliver coding tutorials, and I can kind of have an idea and record a video and, and uh, work with uh, Mathieu, who does the video editing, and other uh, collaborators of the coding train who help with the website and social media and all those kinds of things, and get that video out pretty quickly. And um, I'm trying to do something a little bit more creative and a little strange for the video for this conference. Um, and so um, uh, it's kind of con it's consuming me. It's not exactly why I haven't been live streaming for the last month. I was out of town. Um, and didn't have my setup with me. Well, I was working, but I just didn't have my setup with me. But it's kind of what's now consuming me. Good news for all of you if you're not as interested in me being consumed with the mouse stuff is uh, the conference is happening at the end of the month. And I'll be back to regular coding train stuff in May. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit behind. I have a whole set of Nature of Code Chapter 5 tutorials all about steering behaviors that I have yet to release. 
<laughs> There's five videos that I have recorded and are in the process. Um, so what I'm doing today um, is I want to build a couple of the coding examples for the, um, the conference video that I'm making. Um, so that's what's happening today. If you will bear with me for a second, I um, also, oh, whoa, I'm getting some ah, messages. Boom, 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 ding, 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 ding. Okay, great, hold on, time out, going back to this, this view. I was waiting for this to come in. Um, I am now, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got, a, we've got a new coding train character um, that I'm also going to present to you. Please, uh, as you were, uh, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Boy, what am I? Oh, I forgot that I was still live streaming. I thought I actually like just cut myself off and put the intermission screen on, but <laughs> I'm still here. Give me a second. Um, okay, we are just about, I'm just about there. Image number two. I just had to go into my direct messages to grab these images, which is why I don't want to show you what I'm doing. Image number three. And I think I've got one more to get. Oh my, there's so many more. Image number four. I don't think I need all of these. Uh, and image number five. There we go. Okay, the beeping. Um, okay. Um, all right, what am I doing now? I'm being distracted by being at mentioned so many times. <laughs> uh, I might have to turn off my notifications. Uh, Hold on, almost there, almost back, grabbing these files. Um, back to the coding train, Discord, hide this, and make sure I have, uh, where's that um, in Discord, the streamer safe mode? This is not going very well. Streamer mode. Enabled. Okay, great. Got it. Okay, and now one more button to press. Okay. And um, I'm coming back to you in three, I mean, I'm actually here. Coming back to you in three, two, one. Here we are. Now, before I can go any further, I need to figure something out. So what I'm gonna do, and I, Simon, thank you for all your reminders. I'm, I'm not doing a good job of using this mouse. Maybe if I just pick a different one, maybe we should, does anybody have, I have a whole bag of old computer mice here. This is actually one of my favorites. This particular mouse has an actual like floating sailboat in it. Let's try this one, see if it works. I don't know if any of these work. These are all um, old PS2 mice. And so I um, have an adapter. Um, I'm gonna unplug the Crayola one and let's try this one. I have this amazing Mickey Mouse mouse, um, but I'll show it to you in a second, but that one I couldn't get to work. I don't know what I did with it actually. Um, all right, let's see, how's this? Oh, this one works really well. Okay, this one works much better. <laughs> let's try this one for a little while. It's also a roller ball mouse. Look, you can even see the water there. Um, okay, so this is my uh, data that I'm collecting so far. Um, all right, so what I, the next thing I need to do, I've got a bunch of things I need to do here. One is, uh, right, so now I can pepper I, um, these around. The desktop should look kind of busy with lots of things on it. Oh, so one thing you're not realizing, probably, and I'm gonna just reveal this to you, is that this is not actually what my desktop looks like. I am going to go to, oh, too many things open, uh, laptop. 
properties. Nope, not properties. Laptop filters. So this is what my desktop actually looks like. And maybe I should just live stream with it looking exactly as it really looks. It's got a solid green background, but in open broadcast studio, I'm keying out that background. <laughs> and I have this like these mouse characters there. Um, and what I need to do, no, no, no. Stig is asking, it's a Mickey Mouse mouse. I got to find it. Um, where is my Mickey Mouse mouse? Oh, here it is. I hereby present to you the Mickey Mouse mouse. <laughs> Um, but what is very important that I do is I need to be capturing my screen, this entire live stream, but I, 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 uh, I could, obviously this whole stream is being recorded and archived, but it's got me in it. It's got the, uh, the mouse cam in it. So I think what I will do, um, is I'm just going to open up open broadcast studio. If you haven't seen this software before, oh, there we are. There I am. Um, and um, let me create a scene called uh, desktop. Um, and then I am going to add a, a um, not window capture, display capture. And that's fine. Let's just, just call it. There. So this is now capturing the full display. Um, and then let's just check the settings. Um, output, um, recording path, that's fine. High quality, medium file size, probably fine. I'm afraid to make it much larger. MP4 is a little bit scary because if it crashes, um, can I make this higher? I guess this will be fine, right? Does anybody have any uh, suggestions before I press record on what settings? Um, um, all right, I think I'm gonna just be okay with this. What if I go here? Video, oh, canvas resolution, output scaled. Yeah, this is, this is, this is all fine. Okay, I'm gonna leave it as such. Um, I'm gonna hit start recording. So now I am recording everything that I do on my desktop. The other thing that I want to record is this mouse cam footage. How am I gonna do that? Uh, all right, somebody tell me. Um, Jeffrey is saying you should disable window tinting in the settings so all of the windows aren't green. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> if somebody wants to give me, um, if so, I really have to turn my notifications off. I'm getting so, by the way, this is, I'm in a I'm in a like a crazy place right now because I have so much going on in so many different aspects of my life. But we're gonna make this happen. Window tinting is in Mac OS system preferences. The thing is, I don't really mind um, what I'm gonna use this for. I don't really mind having the window tinting. I think, but the stream is laggy. Is that I that's the second message I saw about that. I, you know. I don't see anything being laggy, but what can I, um, hopefully it's um, just um, not, so not um, everybody. Hmm. All right, so here's what I need now. <laughs> I was really, by the way, I was setting up for this live stream starting at 9 a.m. this morning, <laughs> and obviously I didn't finish because I'm still trying to set them things up. I wanna also record this. So what's the equivalent? I have Open Broadcast Studio running already to stream. So I don't want to record to disk with Open Broadcast Studio, but what can I use? This is hooked up to my Windows computer just to record the output to disk of this particular camera um, as one big video file while I'm streaming. Um, Windows has, um, oh, you know what? I wonder if the chroma keying is causing it to be really slow. So let's turn off the chroma keying. The fact that OBS has to chroma key the desktop. Let's see. I have, by the way, I also have this mouse, <laughs> which I'm using to control the Windows computer. So, like, uh, let me turn off and see if that. Um, let me turn off the chroma keying. That was just to make it visually nicer for those of you watching, but it's more authentically. Gr this is actually what I'm uh, streaming. Um, okay, VBS. I'm being told. 
Um, so tell me if this uh, fixes, oh no, it does look kind of choppy, even in Open Broadcast Studio. Why do you think that is? That's weird. I've never had this issue. I could try unplugging and plugging back in. That always, USB capture, HDMI, highest frame. Let's just give me a second here. Let me unplug this. No signal. I'm gonna plug it back in. No, it's still kind of choppy. The, the, the good news is what I'm, I mean, I think it's still watchable and my, you know, this is the important recording that I'm making now, which I don't think has any issues in it. Um, reboot, yeah. Uh, handbrake. Uh, the capture of your laptop is low FPS. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, I can try to debug this a little bit longer. Let's try this. So now I'm doing something crazy on my back. I switched cameras. Let's go back to this. Device default, custom. Whoa, highest FPS match, output FPS. Whoa. Now it's gone. Device default. I I have a better idea of what to do. It's a little bit extreme. This is but I'm gonna do it anyway. I think this is probably not ah I think I had it into one of the lower speed USB ports. That I didn't realize. Let's see if this fixes it. Ooh, so it's gone now, which it should be. Thank you all for bearing with me here. This is, uh, okay. Yeah, fixed, right? That's fixed. It was in a, um, I unplugged my whole setup when I went away because I was using some of the equipment and I plugged the, HD, the HDMI capture uh, device into a lower speed USB port. So I think we should be good now. Um, okay, uh, now the next thing I need to do is I need to record, of course this is now totally frozen. <laughs> Nothing ever works right. Uh, properties, uh, this is so... Uh, and here we go uh, there now this is back um, now what i need to do is figure out how to record um record this camera so i'm still looking for a window a piece of windows sort of software um that just i could i could guess i could run another instance of obs right Whoa, I could run another instance of OBS and just have that one recording just this to disk. Um, let's see about that. Um, now, because this is a little bit ridiculous what I'm doing here, but let's see, what do I have here? Okay. What piece of software do I have that will allow me to record this camera? Um, uh, uh, um, <laughs> I'm looking at all the software I have on this computer. Video LAN, what's that? Uh, oh, that's VLC. Uh, I don't think the voice recorder, Windows. Uh, uh, PowerPoint screen recording. Zoom, should I just use Zoom? 
I'm going to use Zoom and log into a Zoom meeting. This is actually not the worst idea because it'll record it to the cloud. All right, this is crazy. I'm going to open up Zoom. Because <laughs> uh, I know this will work. This is totally ridiculous what I'm doing. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, let's see. Uh, please wait for the host to start this meeting. No, I am the host. I am the host. You have found that out, haven't you? Join with computer audio. Start video. Now let's go to this overhead camera as my video. And... Oh, we can't access the camera because it's being used by OBS. I forgot that Windows can't have two pieces of software. All right, I'm going to give up on that. I'm giving up on this. I'm recording my desktop. That's good enough. Um, this... Um, this will be the recording, this little box will be the recording of the mouse movements. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Hi again. Is it 1030? How am I doing? Terribly, 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 terribly. Thank you all. You are the kindest, nicest, most wonderful people on the internet who are very patient with me. Um, yeah, I could use the virtual camera. So many things I could do to record it, but I'm, I'm I'm giving up on it. I don't think it's that big of a deal if I'm not separately recording me using the mouse. All right. So the two projects I would like to build, and I'm curious to see if anybody um, has a strong preference as to what I start with. But And actually, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to start with what I plan to start with and what I know how to do. Here is one of the core ideas that I am going to talk about in my mouse conference video. I'm going to make a very basic um, P5JS, and this is, um, I guess I'll just leave this up here. Again, I have to try to use this mouse. I'm going to make a very basic uh, P5JS um, example for you right now. And let's make the font a little bit bigger. I think I usually put it at 32. If mouse X is greater than 200, background um, red. I need to look at my script. <laughs> Hold on, because in the script that I've written that I'm going to record, I guess I'm gonna, if I'm gonna record it later, I could just do whatever I did here. All right, I'll match it. I haven't recorded it yet. They, I'm going to record some voiceover to explain this example. So I'm going to say if the mouse is on the right-hand side of the window, and this is bothering me, and I used the wrong mouse again. Put this down here. There we go. Um, then color the background red. Otherwise, color the background green if it's on the left-hand. And I definitely should not use green because I'm keying out the color green. That's the wrong mouse. I have so many different mice. All right, so let's say it'll be blue if it is on the left-hand side. So this is, this is one of the first things that you, not, not you specifically, you, the person watching this live stream right now, but the royal you, so to speak, um, uh, might learn in an intro to coding course. So this is something that I, that as a first example of a couple things. One, conditional logic. And thank you, um, Ab Abjit is making an excellent uh, suggestion, which it would make more sense for me to um, write in with divided by two um, in order to, if I were to change the window, the canvas size, now um, it still works. I might also just for um, being able to uh, see some, see kind of what's going on, I might want to draw a line from uh, the center to the bottom. And boy, I got my X's and Y's mixed up. Line of X comma Y, and then X comma Y. There we go. So I see that line. Uh, maybe we'll make that 
um, a little brighter and uh, we'll make it a little bit thicker. I'm using the wrong mouse again. So now we can see blue, red, blue, red, red, blue, red, blue. So I have this kind of theory here. I don't know if it's really a theory, but one of the things I want to discuss and think about is what does it mean that, uh, how, do, wh how do, what is an effective way to teach and understand machine learning? And so there's a talk um, Kyle McDonald, um, you can find this online, the Kick Festival. Um, there's a recording of his talk um, on Vimeo from the Kick Festival. Talks about, and this is not his original idea, but he has a really nice quote in that talk about it. Talks about programming as writing instructions for the computer to follow. I'm paraphrasing here, of course. Whereas machine learning is instead of writing the instructions for the computer to follow, is providing the examples for the, um, uh, for the computer to learn from to then develop the instructions, <laughs> right? So if, if a, um, so in other words, here are, some, here are some examples. Here are some examples of the mouse on the right-hand side of the screen. Here are some examples of the mouse on the left-hand side of the screen. Can you learn from that to extrapolate knowing whether the mouse is on the right-hand side or the left-hand side? That is the essence, in some ways, of machine learning, as opposed to kind of traditional programming, which is here's a very explicit rule. So I like this scenario because it is incredibly ridiculous, <laughs> right? I don't believe, I don't know that rewriting this code with a neural network to decide whether to color the background blue or red, what value does that add? It's like tremendous amount of overkill. Um, in terms of just this, if this is what I want the program to do. But my theory here, what I want to suggest here is that this could be an effective way to rewrite this code to do, uh, and, and, and Peter in the chat, thank you for this, is saying, can be described as explicit versus implicit as well, which is an excellent um, set of terminology to sort of think about in this context. So what I want to do right now, and I'm giving myself about 25 minutes, <laughs> is I want to rewrite this example to, in, to, to do exactly the same thing, when I move the mouse left and right, the color of the background changes, but rather than have an if statement, I'm going to have a neural network uh, operate on the uh, classifying the points as left and right hand side. Now you might be saying like, are you insane? I mean, well, clearly the answer to that is somewhat, uh, <laughs> you know, we can make arguments on both sides, but I, I, you know, how are you gonna do that in 25 minutes? So, you know, I'm not going to build a neural network from scratch, although I do have like a 10 part video series. <laughs> um, and um, what I'm going to do instead is use the ML5 library. So let's get started. And I'm gonna go to uh, ML5.js. Uh, and I am using the wrong mouse again. I'm going to get go to the Get Started page. Um, I am going to find uh, this. And so I can import the ML5 library into um, index.html. I better save this, by the way. And I'm gonna call this Mouse Learning. That's the title of my talk, Mouse Learning. Um, and I don't need the sound library, so I will. I know that second one is the sound library, so let's paste in this. And the other thing I, I really prefer to do is, um, hold on, ML5, and I just, oops, ML5 GitHub. Uh, <laughs> wrong mouse again. I can't. I can't get it right. I should switch. By the way, I need a like reminder to switch mice every every once in a while. So I have a lot of fun ones to try. Um, uh, library. Uh, releases, where are the releases? Oh, they move. 0 0.6.1. So I, I prefer rather than saying latest to put, just put a version number in um, and so what do I need? Let's, let me duplicate this. I'm gonna do duplicate. I should probably just so, so I have these as separate versions and I want to uh, have a variable and I'm gonna call it model for machine learning model. And the model is an ML5 neural, 
network. And typically when you create an ML5 neural network, the idea is that you have to give it some configuration information about what are the inputs and what are the outputs. So, and, um, so I'm going to uh, make a JavaScript object called options and the inputs are, I forget how this works. So I'm gonna just try to do it from memory and then I'll look at the reference and we'll see where I went wrong. I just need an X and a Y. So those will be the inputs to the neural network, right? The inputs, the inputs, actually, oh no, I just need the X. Oh my goodness, this is a neural network with one input. How insane. Let's, let's, let's go with the simplest possible. I mean, it's again, this is absurd. Um, yeah, and Simon's giving me a very good note here, which is that um, I shouldn't call this model. We'll call this, I'll just call this brain, because uh, this is going to be the brain of my program. Uh, because model is a, a built-in variable maybe in uh, P5 and it can cause a conflict. The outputs are, uh, let's call it left and right as the sort of labels of what I'm classifying. And then I want to say debug is true, which is um, not so important right now, but I'll, I'll show you where that comes into play later when I start debugging the neural network. So um, let's give myself a little bit more space to code and let me hit run. Things are still working, no errors. We're in good shape here, I think. And by the way, I'm still by the, this is all of my mouse movements so far from today <laughs> that I'm collecting this data because I'm gonna do something else with this data. <laughs> uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, yeah, I'll come back to that in a little bit. That's using something called the Java robot class, which I definitely want to refer to. Okay, so now that I have this, what's next? I want to. I need to collect some data. Um, and 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 just to be uh, clear about this, um, if if this is all completely new to you, um, I would suggest this tutorial set of tutorials that I have. I'm kind of redoing very in a very fast paced way this um, ML5 train your own neural network save data, save model, uh, there's a regression example. So all of these video tutorials that I have on the channel, if you're brand new today um, and machine learning is totally new to you, you've never seen ML5 before, um, these videos would hopefully give you some more context. Okay, so I'm gonna add the mouse pressed function. Then I believe uh, whenever I press the mouse, I should just make a bit of data that has mouse X, mouse Y. You know what would be great? The input should actually just be mouse X. I should call the label input mouse X. And I can't bring myself to not use mouse Y. <laughs> but I'm gonna, do it. and then and then the object, I can use that fancy enhanced object literal by just saying this is the data that's the input to the neural network. Uh, oh, and thank you Soren for, um, for uh, providing links about what I'm talking about into the chat. That's uh, uh, wonderful, it's so helpful and I so appreciate when people do that. Okay, next up, the um, the label. So here's where it gets starts getting really absurd. Oh, so this is the input. That's the input. Now, the output is, I honestly, like I've kind of lost, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna assume the output is left. And then if mouse x is greater than width divided by two, the output should be, let's just call this label right now. Label is left. The label should be uh, right. And then I believe I can say brain.add data inputs. And, uh, and then I think I'm supposed to put the label in an array. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways you can do this with ML5 and I'm kind of guessing as I'm going because I don't like know it off the top of my head because you could have multiple outputs, multiple classifications or regressions. So um, maybe this isn't the friendliest way to write it, but the idea is the inputs are just one thing, the mouse X value and the output is either left or right. So let's just run this to see if I get any errors. Click, 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 click. I think it would be helpful if I console log something like um, adding data mouse X, um, adding, in, uh, I'll, I'll just do like this. 
input mouse x comma um comma output um label so we'll see something hopefully up here now yeah right right left left so the um the console log is showing me stuff that's correct so that's i'm adding that data to the neural network and then uh i guess i'm going to use keep rest i can make a button let's make a button to make this example a little bit nicer um, let's make a, a variable called train button, train button equals create button, train for coding train. <laughs> then I will uh, say train button mouse pressed and then brain dot train. And I believe when I, is that right? Mouse pressed, oh no, hold on, function. I have no idea what I'm doing. I forgot how to write JavaScript to call the train function. Now there's also options. I think the only option I really care about is epoch is something called epochs. And I'm just going to make that one right now. An epoch is a training cycle over all of the data. So again, everything I'm doing here is uh, <laughs> basically uh, absurd. <laughs> because I am trying to train an all-powerful neural network with one input and one output equivalent to just is the mouse on the left and right hand side. So how much data I have, what all the sort of like, what's the learning rate? All these things are kind of really arbitrary right now. So let me just see if this gives me any errors. And by the way, this is now where debug comes in. So once I hit this train button, I should see a debug window that's showing me a graph of the loss. So as the neural network is learning from these examples, right? These examples of, and I'll do this now, of like right, 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 left, 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 left. I should really draw something as I'm doing this. It'll be much more interesting visually because ultimately this screen capture that I'm doing is going to be um, in this video that I'm making. And so I'm now, let me, I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to add something to draw because I think that'll be kind of important. So I'm going to hit train and let's see what happens. And I got an error. So that's good. I mean, not good that I got an error, but uh, cannot read property to lowercase of null. Huh? Line 16. Brain, train. Uh, all right, let's let's look at the ML5 neural network documentation. It's time. Um, and uh, train, no, train model. And, and train, tra oh, uh, uh, that looks like I did it kind of right. Um, let's see, what did I get wrong here? Also just afraid that my, I want to make sure my um, OBS thing is still recording. Yeah, okay, it looks like it is. I like, kind of want to stop it just to check the file, but I'll keep going. Um, what did I get wrong? Cannot read property to lowercase of null. Hold on, L let's look at the JavaScript console here. Um, let me hit stop um, because, uh, oh yeah, this is something in ML5. Um, now, is this a bug that I found or, um, hold on, let's look, let's see if I, uh, let's look at inputs. Well, I could also do it as just a number. No, average temperature. Oh, oh, it's not an op. Well, no, that's right. Oh. Left, right. That looks, this looks right. I guess I could say output label. Is that actually what I'm supposed to be doing? Is it just freaked out because there's only one data point? <laughs> All right, let's, just because I'm like, it's making me paranoid that it's gonna like not work without at least two inputs. 
<laughs> because why would you ever have a neural network with one input? So let me um, add a second input here. And um, let me look for the add data function. Inputs is an object output. Oh, you know, that's another way I could do it. I think maybe actually the way that I should be doing this is this. Let's try it this way. Um, okay, still got an error. What if I say this here? Weird. Uh, I haven't been working with the recent ML5. Let's just try like this. Whoops. Is there not a point one? Whoa, I messed something up. Okay, so that at least this error is not like some new error. Oh, oh my goodness, Master Stormer in the Discord member chat. Ah, I forgot something so important. Where's my sound effect of me being very sad? <laughs> like, this could be my sound effect of me being happy. Uh, I forgot um, the default task that ML5 performs is a regression, which has the output of the neural network be a floating point number. So let's just see what this gives me. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Something else went wrong, but that's fine. Uh, all right, all right, all right. That's fine. Okay, let's get to... Um, this is, we're getting closer now. That was definitely an issue. Let's try, um, I'm gonna go back to this. I don't know why that I wanted to do it this way. It kind of doesn't make sense, maybe, but one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, uh, train, so what just happened there? Shoot. Okay, let's go back to an earlier version of ML5. Same error, that's good. I just wanna make sure it's not like Okay, what did I miss in terms of how I'm setting this up? Uh, I think the, w let me look at my uh, examples that go along with, uh, let me look at this particular example to find out. So this example is from, it's basically I'm rebuilding what is in uh, this ex code example. And if I go to the web editor, now, um, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. X, Y label. Oh, I did forget to normalize the, no, but that, I did forget to normalize the data before I trained it. Um, and inputs X, Y, add data target, where is it, is an object with the label. Okay, so let me try to mirror this. Um, an object with the label. So, and what did I just say I forgot to do? I forgot to say 
in the train button brain.normalize data. Now this should really be the same as that example. That's the only thing. Um, it should work without normalizing it, like in terms of not giving me an error, it just should be kind of awkward. So let's try this. Try clicking, 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 clicking. Hit train. Let's give it some more epochs. Because <laughs> it's just like so fast. Uh, what did I do that's different from... So it did... Ten Why did... did hmm. Change outputs back to left, right. I don't think I'll try that. It really shouldn't matter actually. The interesting thing is honestly, like this is not necessary at all. Um, ML5 is set up to once you've added data to like figure out what the configuration is of the inputs and the outputs. So let me try and let's do it this way. I want to say console log inputs um, and um, console log. Let's just look at both of these just to be sure. Two, three. Yeah, so that's. This is what I'm putting in. You can see it down here. Let's call train. Let's look at this. E is not a function. Callback. Oh, oh, I know what the problem is. I'm such a dum dum. I think I just forgot to be. No, yeah. So that uh, K Weekman is suggesting your model might be too complex to be trained with so little data. Data? No, no, I, honestly, I think what this is, is I'm just forgetting like an important step, which is that um, I do need to give it at least one callback. Like, I, I don't think there's anything in the model, in the ML5 code that will account for um, when you, um, if you don't bother to give it like you finished training callback. I, I, I literally think it's just this, uh, which I should have realized from the jump. So I'm clicking, I'm clicking, I'm gonna hit train. Yeah, see, I just didn't have a callback. Sorry, everybody, that was the problem. Uh, and I realize I'm kind of like sitting in front of some of this so that you can't see, but hopefully you're following. All right, so now, and, and, and I would like to be able to see more of the code, so let me do this. All right, so the, uh, the thing that I would like to do now is uh, have it draw the, the data. So um, can I, hmm, I mean, this is, I'm just gonna do this myself. Uh, I think I could get the, actually, all right, let's, let's, let's look at the data uh, in uh, ML5 itself so I can figure out where it is. So I'm clicking uh, and then I want to um, basically uh, evaluate myself. I think if I look at this brain object and I, apologies that this is here because now I want you to look here. Um, and this, <laughs> too many mice, this I can close. Um, this here is, I believe it's in brain.data maybe training array zero. Um, what if I say brain.normalize data? Okay, now it's there. So where was it before I called normalize? Add data, load data, save data. That's so weird. Where It's got to be saved somewhere. Hold on. 
you run this again. Okay, now, this is silly because I could just look this up probably in the ML5 documentation. Data, training, array. Hmm, where did the data go? Metadata, add data, load data, normalize data. It's so strange. Like, why is the data nowhere until neural network data? Ah, raw. Here it is. So this is, um, uh, you know, obviously I could just save my own mouse clicks, <clears throat> but I would like to get access to this. So this was uh, brain dot neural network data dot data dot raw. <laughs> okay. How are we doing? Oh, it's 11 o'clock. We're really close. I'm really close. I'm going to move through this a little bit. So now in draw, I want to say, uh, let data equals, what did I say? Brain dot neural network data dot data dot raw, right? And then for let um, row of data, console dot log row. Let's put this in mouse press just for a second so I can see if um, this is actually right. So yeah, I got an object with X's, mouse X, mouse Y. So if I take this and go here, then I can say um, circle um, row dot X's dot mouse X, row dot X's dot mouse Y, uh, fill 255. So let's do that. Uh, errors. Whoops. No, stop console logging. Am I in draw? Oh, I need to give it a um, actual size. There we go. Okay, great. So that's that. And then uh, fill. You know what? I should make the labels red and blue, right? So let's make the labels red and blue that way i can just say fill um row dot y's dot label and i shouldn't have this anymore and we can say um no stroke Uh, and there we go. Okay, great. Okay, so now I have I am I'm ready for the next step here, which is to see if the model oh and sorry, this is totally in your way again. Um, okay, sorry about that. One, two, three, four. Let's see if I can get it to work with like, I don't know, 20 data points. That's a lot. All right, now I'm going to train the model. And I guess I should give it more epochs. Let's give it uh, 50 epochs. And I kind of want to go back to not having mouse Y. <laughs> Let's go back to no mouse Y, okay? Because <laughs> now we should be able to do that. Uh, oh, wrong mouse. Uh, and now, wait, what just happened? Oh, because, oh, but I do want the mouse. <laughs> I do want, if I'm going to draw it, okay, fine, I'll keep the mouse Y. It's, it's, it's irrelevant information, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it just for my own sanity right now because I also need to finish this. Um, 
So let's also, while I'm here, <clears throat> let's say, um, hold on, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. What am I doing next? Ah, is trained. Is trained is false. When the training is complete, is trained is true. And then in draw, if is trained, the inputs, let's, I'm going to make new inputs, is mouse x, mouse y. Then the um, output, the, the output is take the brain and call classify. I'm going to try calling classify sync. So normally sync would require an asynchronous callback. I mean, classify would require an asynchronous callback. But I am just going to try it with classify sync to see if this works. Those inputs. And then I should be able to say background outputs index zero dot label. I know I'm not explaining all the pieces. I'll once again refer you to uh, the video tutorial series where I go through how this works in great detail. I will explain this if it actually works, which I don't necessarily think that it will. So now I'm just gonna give it a few data points on each side. I'm gonna hit train. The model is being trained over 50 epochs. Um, I think this now should probably just go over here or something. Um, and I can hide this. Oh, look at that. Look at that, folks. <laughs> All right, that's a little bit insane to me, The what it's doing with the dots once I've trained the model. But um, let's, add, let's add a little stroke. Um, that is wild. So I have now changed my, did I, right, this if statement, right? This if statement right here, which is now commented out, is doing exactly the, or this neural network is with the inputs of mouse X and mouse Y, which I believe is completely unnecessary here, is now doing the actual work, the same work as this particular if statement. I have finished this particular project. Now let me give it some nice, kind of training all the way up until the edge there. And by the way, what I really should demonstrate now is that I think I could also get rid of that line and I could have more um, uh, other shapes. Okay, ready? Now I'm gonna hit train. We're seeing the loss go down over 50 epochs. I'm gonna hide this debug panel. And here I am on the right-hand side I have blue, the left-hand side is red. <laughs> now notice it's not perfect. Like I, it appears perfect if I do it really fast. Um, and we could do something, I could visualize the entire like solution space, right? I could iterate over every single pixel and get the output color. That would be certainly be interesting to do. Um, I don't know that I have time to do it right now. A guy is saying it's cooler when the dots disappear. <laughs> um, oh, and I wanna swap the mouse. So let's do this again, but let's try a new mouse. I actually really wanna try um, this. So this is a um, giant rollerball mouse called the Trackman uh, Vista. Let's give this one a try. See if I can get this crazy example to work with this one. I also want to get rid of the line and try to make like a circle in the middle. So like, can I make the equivalent of a button basically or a rollover? So let's see, I'm unplugging this mouse. Yeah, diagonal model. I think I'm gonna do a circular one. I mean, this is very similar to my perceptron example. All right, so first let's put this here. Is this actually working? Oh my God, this actually works. Oh, this is very weird. 
weird. How do I use this thing? <laughs> Did anybody actually use these? Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Now I'm going to go over here. Oh, I'm going to click this button. Wait, is this a button I can click? Yeah. On the side with my thumb right here. Okay. You know what I should have done is I should have, I should plug, the, you know what I could do? I could do this right now. I don't know if this is a good idea or not because I haven't been doing this the whole time, but I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna try, I, why not? It's caution to the wind. Um, this is, there's so many reasons why this is a bad idea. I was gonna just plug this camera into this actual laptop and then just bring it up on the desktop and it would actually be recorded. And that way, I think that would be fun to do. Let me do that, okay. So um, let's first get rid of the, and I'm, I'm over time here because I need to take my break, but I will get to that in just a few minutes. Um, there, that goes away. I'm unplugging it. Where is it plugged into? It's plugged into here. Now, I am plugging it into this USB port. Okay. Now, oh my God, I can't do it. I got to use the trackpad just for time right now. Uh, new, no, QuickTime. And new movie recording. Is that what I want? Yeah, but I want to change to this camera, which is now this, then I can, oh, I could actually, this is what I could have just been recording this the whole time. And I mean, is this going to kill my machine to also, and it's so bright. Um, can I um, let's lower the brightness? Oh, there we go. Um, I'm going to throw caution to the wind and record this also. Oh, I could have been doing this the whole time. And then it's also over here. It's behind me. Now I'm over here. Will that fade away that um, I'm recording button? <laughs> I guess, yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, now, it's still kind of bright. Oh, you hear me differently now? Wait, was this whole time I wasn't using this microphone? Oh my God, was I using a low quality mic this whole time and nobody said anything? Hold on, let's check the mic. Test, 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 oh. I think it is this mic now. Maybe it wasn't before. This is a much higher quality mic <laughs> that maybe I was not using, all right. So now, here we go. This is the grand finale. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to take out the line. Well, let's keep the line for a second. I'll do it first. This, okay. <laughs> this is very hard. Yeah, I should bring the exposure down. I know. Okay, maybe it was the same. Mike is fine. It switched a while ago. Interesting. All right, let's train. I should have given it more. I should have given it more epochs. That was my mistake. Okay. Ah, well, this is very strange what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. I'm ready, everybody. Now I'm going to hit the train button. I definitely should have given it more epochs, but that's fine. Now we're going to hide this console. And here we go. Yay! It works. Wild. 
I don't know about you, but I absolutely love what I'm doing. <laughs> so uh, three cheers for myself, from me to myself, pats on the back. Um, I'm hoping this will make an interesting video after I capture the stuff and do some voiceover. Um, but let's try one more thing. I'm going to comment out this line. Hit save. Then I'm going to run the sketch again. And, oh, wait a second. Oh, no, 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 okay, okay, okay. Oh, I cheated. <laughs> I mean, it's all cheating. Everything is cheating, but I cheated of like a whole extra level beyond my original thing that I thought I was cheating, <laughs> um, which is that um, I meant to actually have to manually set the label. So uh, let's let's add that. Drop down. I'm gonna make a, a, a variable called drop down. Drop down equals create select. And then I can think I can see drop drop down dot option uh, red. Drop down uh, dot option blue. Um, and now, and I run this sketch, I should have a drop down here that I, um, where I can just change from red to blue. And then that's really like, I shouldn't be able to automate what the label is. <laughs> and so this should be a drop down dot value. So I have to actually set it. Hello, hello. Um, by the way, am I, I'm very like orange today. I feel like it's not just the hat. Maybe it's the lighting or something in here. I do have a way of, maybe it's cause I, I'm getting a lot of sunlight in here. Um, okay. I'm just checking my messages. I have to pick up children from school at one and I'm actually not nowhere near close to where that is right now. So I definitely have to be out of, off, off by, by a little afternoon. Um, okay. So now what I am looking to do. First, I'll change this to 100 because I want to see it train for longer. And then, um, is this all I meant to do? Um, there was something else that was in my head here a second ago, but now I've forgotten. Oh, let's try it. Red. Red, red. So like if I do this, red, and then I change this to blue and try to do a bunch of blue like here in the center. And then if I hit train, Mm, it's having some trouble differentiating. Do I need more data? Blue in the center, red on the outside. Uh, it's getting confused over here. But you can see that I am getting some results. Now, um, let's try this again, but with, if you'll bear with me, if you'll humor, no, you know what? I'm going to force myself to use this mouse. <laughs> Maybe I should try a different mouse. What else do I have in here? By the way, I have this really awesome um, Star Trek, like communicator mouse. <laughs> but um, unfortunately... Uh, it's the wrong, I don't have an adapter. It's like an old uh, serial port. Can I take the exposure down even further here? I can't really. Um, ooh, I can do weird stuff like this though. Come on back, okay. Um, all right, let's try. I have a Memorex three button mouse. I really like this. Um, I've got some of these old Microsoft. I, I'm really sad that this one doesn't work. Let's just try it just to be 100% sure. Because the Mickey Mouse mouse is really the best of them all. 
Oh, that's the pro. Oh, so ah, I know what the problem is. And I thought about this. All of these clicks are causing the training data to be inputted. So is that if that's a way to say it? Um, there's I, I know what to do. I'm gonna say uh, let I only want uh, clicks that are on the canvas, and then I'm gonna say canvas mouse pressed training data, and then we'll call this function uh, training data. I knew there was something that I was doing wrong. Uh, this is a this is a fool's errand that I'm trying because I, I I I really tried trying to fix this mouse yesterday, but let's just see. So now this mouse, the Mickey Mouse mouse, you can see the button works. The button works, but the cursor does not move. And I've tried. Like I'm opening it up, and we can see the actual like roller mechanism. Like even manipulating the roller mechanism myself, um, I am not able to get the thing to move. I could build an object detection machine learning model to track the mouse and then control the cursor with that. That's a whole other project. I'm sad that I don't have time to do that. Maybe next weekend, oh, next live stream. Um, okay, so this one has to go away, unfortunately. What I, 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 I really like, I really have failed in um, my live poll software because if I had really ever finished that project, I could just have a poll right now for people to vote on a mouse. I do really like this one because it says Packard Bell on it and I don't think Packard Bell exists anymore. So let's try this Packard Bell one. Okay. There we go. Now we're trying the Packard Bell one. How do I wish I could? Is it like. I'm just going to have to live with. I could actually, what I could do um, is I could lower the amount of light in this room. So let me do this. Because um, I have these um, Elgato key lights that I really love. And if I turn them down, like, let me just turn them off for a second. Like. <laughs> I'm in the dark, but at least now this doesn't look so crazy. Let's give myself a little bit more light. Wow. Oh, that's the temperature. I was playing with the color temperature, not the brightness. So um, we keep turning this down. Uh, and then... Uh, well, if I just turn these off, is that even better? All right, I'm turning the lights off just for a second. It's fine. It's, this camera doesn't need the lights. Okay, ready? Here we go. Oh, boy, this one's hard to use. <laughs> it moves so slowly. <laughs> Which is actually fine. I could adjust the settings of the speed. Okay, now let me go to uh, blue. Okay, now let's try, drum roll please, training. Come on, loss. Oh, keep going, keep going. Oh, I need more than 100 e-bucks. It'll keep going, but uh, that's probably gonna do it. So now, blue, red, blue, red. Look at that, beautiful. I made like a rollover button, a rollover with machine learning and an old timey mouse. I love it. I love it. It's ridiculous and I love it. Oh yeah, so, um, right. Uh, people, but, uh, <clears throat> people are making a lot of good um, interface improvement suggestions which absolutely do make sense. Okay, um, let's 
do a couple things here. Let me um, come over here and hit stop. So this is save. That was only 12 minutes. Mouse movements. Save that to the desktop, one. Okay, so I have this archival footage which can get placed into the video that I'm making. Then I also want to, let's go back to OBS and tell it to stop recording. Where, by the way, I'm just gonna, um, just cause I've got my um, OBS configuration I wanna look at. Uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Let's see how that um, turned out. Because it should be here. This is video capture of my entire session just now. Awesome, I think I got that. So this is good raw material footage that I'll be able to add in the background or something of this video that I'm making. Okay, I still have more to do today. This is not the end of the stream, although we're closing in on the end. Um, first, let me close some of this stuff out. Let me click, click here. So this, by the way, uh, it's pretty interesting to see. These are all of the mouse movements that I have done today during this live stream. <laughs> and you can see now uh, over here, like kind of this is the cluster of all that stuff that I was doing. And this is probably a, maybe the menu of the P5 web editor. It's kind of interesting to see this constellation of, of mouse movements. Let me at a minimum just take a screenshot of this. But also if I click, I believe I have it set up to, if this code was written correctly, which I'm gonna um, build a little example like this in a moment, um, I should be able to look at the data folder and see that these are CSVs of all of the mouse clicks, oh, the mouse locations and timestamps. So actually, speaking of which, um, I could really use some help from the community. Let me turn my lights on. Let, let me, <laughs> I really need to do my sponsor segment <laughs> uh, so I don't get fired here. Um, but um, let me just briefly mention um, something that is a sort of a call that I would love help with. I would like to train a sketch RNN style model out of all of these mouse movements because part of what I'm doing is then to have an example of an AI that is just operating the mouse for me. Someone's at front door. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't come to the door right now. <laughs> I hope, hope it's not any of you. Um, uh, so, um, what, um, so yeah, so if, I, I don't actually know how to do this. I was looking at this thing called like Deep SVG. I'm sort of out of my, I'm kind of running out of time here to be able to add this example to the things that I'm building for the mouse conference. So um, if anybody else happens to have a lead or want to help uh, figure out a way to train a sequential model off of the mouse locations, sketch RNN, deep SVG are examples of, um, and it doesn't have to be done well or accurately just to be something that's kind of like fun that I can kind of get to work, you know, huge, uh, benefit if I could do it with TensorFlow.js, <laughs> but um, I'll take any help that I can get. Um, hit me up on Twitter at Shiftman. But before I go to the second half of this live stream where I'm going to look at this Java robot class that's in this example, I want to take a minute uh, or so, and I, I've lost my mouse here, to thank today's sponsor, um, Brilliant. So let me pull up the Brilliant website. Um, and let me pull up my uh, notes over here that I have, uh, that I seem to have lost. It's okay. Mm, please hold. <laughs> Highly professional operation I've got going on here. Uh, it's funny, I wrote up all these notes and then I, I by accident closed 
the window. And I don't really need the notes because, um, <clears throat> you know, I, it's very easy for me to talk about Brilliant because I use it regularly myself. Um, and uh, what I find to be um, the most wonderful part about Brilliant, and I think I can take the banner away now that I have the website up, is the way that it is provides an alternate modality for learning that's different from what I do in video tutorials. So hopefully you, the viewer of The Coding Train, like to watch my videos. You learn something, you have a little fun, maybe you make a creative project. For me, in addition, I do watch a lot of tutorials, video tutorials, and I, especially like other people's live coding live streams. But a, a really fundamental, I think, and critical way to learn is through practice. You know, it's not memorizing, it's not watching lectures, although those can be great too, being someone who delivers lectures, but um, doing it yourself. And so Brilliant is a website that really allows you to do it yourself. And I think the thing for me to really highlight are these courses. And you can see our beautiful geometry, statistics, scientific, infinity, all the infinity one is so, so, so good. Uh, computer science fundamental, introduction to neural networks, mathematical fundamentals, pre-algebra, scientific things. Thinking. Um, you know, I've been doing, my kids are in um, uh, fourth and sixth grade and I, I, I'm like, they're like, please stop bothering me. Like we could do our math homework on our own. But I'm like, can I please do my math homework with you? And so when, when they don't let me, I could just go to Brilliant and kind of do my own math homework. So um, it's, a, it's a wonderful website full of courses. You can just sign up for free. I'll put the banner um, right here, you know, if you sign up um, just for free, it actually like helps me out a little bit, lets them know that you found Brilliant through the coding train. If it's something that really appeals to you and you want to get the full uh, premium subscription to unlock all of the features, um, by going through that link, you will also get a 20% off coupon. I'll also mention that it's actually a really great thing uh, to give as a gift. So sometimes, you know, if, if you don't know what to buy somebody and you don't want to like you know, just keep collecting more material goods. Um, giving somebody a subscription for learning um, is a wonderful um, idea for a gift. So I would definitely also suggest that as well. Let's. What I like to do, I, I just you know, I usually like to poke through some of the courses, but um, um, I really want to quickly just look at this ride the wave um, challenge that I did look at earlier. Um, <clears throat> ben, I immediately noticed it because it is a really, really related to um, if I go to Nature of Code on my website, and if I get to chapter three, you can see these videos like graphing the sine wave, um, additive waves. Um, so if you wanna think about waveforms um, and go deeper into them, um, a lot of the stuff that, I, that I'm doing with physics simulation, there's tons more content on and Brilliant, and I've already lost. So let's look at this one and see if we can uh, solve this together. And I've lost my view of the chat. So let me just um, grab my view of the chat um, so that I can see if anybody's telling me anything super important. Um, okay, so look at these two graphs. If they both remind you of polynomials, you're right. Can we say something more about the relationship between these two graphs? Now, I already know what the relationship is because I looked at this earlier. I haven't looked at what the, the challenge question is yet, but I did look at um, just this sort of like written description. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play some uh, uh, awaiting music and think about this. I'll look in the chat to see if anybody wants to offer a uh, suggestion. Interestingly, oh yeah, no, this is what I expect, yeah. I was trying to look for it. I was trying to look for, for me, what's important to note is look at these peaks and valleys. Right up here, this peak is around like negative three. And what's happening at negative three? Oh, it's right around zero. This peak is around one. And what's happening there at one? Oh, look, it's at zero. Same, what about this valley here? Negative one negative one, oh, look at that, it's right around zero. So, ever heard the term the slope? The slope refers to what? The kind of like, what's, uh, you can think of like the tangent, like if I were to draw a line that's tangent, like the slope, <laughs> I've like lost my ability to use words. Um, but uh, let, let's let's read because it'll it'll explain this. It, you know, here we go. We've got the answer to the derivative. The reason I was coming up with slope is like, and I'm gonna. I think it's it's the music. It must be the music. As the top of this curve levels off, 
The tangent to that is a flat line. The slope, the change, the rate of change in that curve is suddenly zero um, at those peaks and values. The derivative being the rate of change. I talk about this a lot in my videos about position and velocity. Velocity being the change in position. So this graph, I, if I've read this correctly, is the derivative. It is graphing the slope of the tangent to this curve. And so that's why you'll see at these peaks and values, uh, peaks and val that peaks and valleys is where um, the derivative is zero. And I'm, I'm sure I've gotten this not exactly right. Oh, look at this. And this is the other thing I love about Brilliant is um, it gives you, I, I was like trying to like use my mouse cursor, but here is a really wonderful interactive environment. Now here's what I love about Brilliant also. <laughs> I want to make this as a P5 sketch now so, so badly, but I can't because I don't have time to do that right now. But I should come and do a whole um, session with like that. But um, uh, so anyway, you can read a lot more. You can sort of see uh, more explanation. But let's um, let's go down to the challenge. So this is today. This is a graph. One of the three graphs below represents the derivative of the function graphed above. Okay, which one? They all kind of look the same to me. <laughs> this is gonna be hard. Well, if I go with my peaks and valleys, right? Valley at zero, peak at one. Valley at two, peak at three. So the derivative should cross zero at zero, one, two, three. Oh, so it's this one or uh, it's gonna, zero, one. No, so A or B, what about C? Ah, so it's definitely not C. I've eliminated C. So it's A or B. Um, the other thing I think I could do is here it's increasing. So the derivative should be positive. And here the, it's decreasing, so the derivative should be negative. Is that right? So it's not this one, because this is going down, and then after one, it's going up. It should be going up. Oh, well, it's the value is increasing, but like the rate of change actually is going up, 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 up. Then it's going down, down, down to zero. Then it's going up, up, up. Then it's slowing down, right? So I, I, it's not just like what is the literal value changing. It's how is that, how is it changing? So I think, oh no, no, that's right. It's B because it's the rate of change is going up, up. It's increasing. It's all it's positive that whole time. It's hard to see because this looks like a straight line to me but it's like increasing more rapidly and then it's increasing more slowly, then it levels off, it's decreasing more rapidly. So that matches up with B, I think. I see a, I see a B in the chat from Damien. <laughs> right, and Simon most like very accurately states, what does this have to do with the wave series though? It has more to do with calculus and trig. And ultimately that's absolutely correct. So the only thing it has to do with the wave series is visually they match. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I saw that and that's what grabbed me. Um, but you're absolutely right. Um, um, I do think it does, it is interesting to think about how you might uh, think about waves as sort of more polynomial forms or uh, how you might be able to like bring these two concepts closer together. But that is correct that the, it's, it, this is really more of a calculus problem. All right, let's do B. I don't even know if this is operational. I'm gonna get my one day streak now. Decreasing rapidly slowly has to do with the second derivative, like acceleration to velocity, velocity to position. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and here we go. Oh, I got it correct. Okay, great. I got my one day streak because I haven't done it. I didn't do a challenge yesterday. So um, this is, and then this is why I love, there's all sorts of wonderful community-based explanations. So, um, you know, for me, uh, and what I would really suggest you do is if you participate in these challenges, try to solve them with P5 and code and then go back to them. And and by the way, if you want to also learn, I, I meant to show you these, but like this, for example, uh, Brilliant has a whole course on learning Python. So you can see it's interactive and you can type code in it um, as well as this neural network code, um, example as well. So um, thank you to um, Brilliant for being the uh, sponsor of today's live stream. Uh, I'm going to take a short three or four minute break. I have like half an hour left to look at the Java robot class when I come back. Um, so stick around if you can. If you have a few minutes to sign up through this link at Brilliant, um, you can do so for free. And if it, uh, um, and if you're interested in the, obviously the premium subscription, you can get a discount there. Okay, so see you all in approximately, uh, hopefully a little bit less than five minutes. 
I'll be right back. Sorry, I hit the mute button on the music. <laughs> so the whole time I can hear it in my monitor, but none of you could hear it. Coming back here for uh, what is uh, Simon most accurately states is not the second half of the stream. I think I can say part two. Part two will be much shorter than uh, part one. Uh, thanks again to Brilliant. Um, all right, so now before I start coding this part, what I need to do is a couple things. Uh, I need to get my recording going again. So I'm gonna start recording my desktop. So that's recording. Then I need to get my mouse cam going also, uh, which I should be able to do this way and just move it over here like this and shrink it up and hit, um, hit record. This is the way I should have been doing this all along, by the way. Okay, so mouse cam is recording, but we also need to pick a mouse because this one was this one's not really very usable. Okay, so what do I have left? I, I did I do have this lovely Crayola mouse that I don't think I used yet. So let's use the Crayola mouse. 
Um, there we go. Plugging it in. Okay, now, hopefully everybody can hear me and see me. This mouse works pretty well, so that's good. Um, the other thing I want to make sure that I do um, is open up the data collect because I do want to be running data collection in the background. It might cause a problem because I'm going to, I don't know if the Java robot class can be used in multiple sketches, but I'm going to assume that this is okay for the moment. All right. So what is it that I want to do? Demonstrate to you. Um, uh, robot uh, demo Java. It's, we it's weird that it's called, um, and I'm going to save this just on the desktop. Um, it's weird that it's called the robot class. So I, I do need a browser. I closed the browser. I need the browser open. Uh, Java robot. So what is this Java robot? And I don't know what version of Java I'm using and processing, but let's let's go to this one. So the the Java robot class. So okay, hold on, everybody. I got a lot of explaining to do about what's going on here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> processing is a programming environment that I use quite often. Um, it is what I used almost exclusively before I started doing a lot of my work and teaching in JavaScript in the browser with P5.js. Processing is built with the programming language Java. Um, and even though it is a sort of closed environment with a full drawing API and a lot of other sort of like a core functionality and a lot of extended libraries, you actually from within processing have access to anything Java can do. And Java as a language, I, I don't know the right way to state this, but it's kind of like the way that I think about it, and I'll be curious to hear what you think, is it's not the best language at anything, but it's one of the best languages for everything. Like there's, it's very hard to come up with something you can't do in Java. So it doesn't excel at any given thing, but it just, you can kind of do anything and it's cross-platform. There's this whole Java virtual machine stuff. There's a lot of complexity in terms of, um, um, and, it, and it is a little bit out of date and browsers don't support Java applets anymore. All of that aside, I love, I love the Java Jive and it loves me. <clears throat> so um, it's my first programming love. Everyone should feel about something like the way that I feel about Java, or maybe not. I don't know if that's just weird. I gotta hit stop here because it's bothering me that there's this error here. Is it still, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to run this data collection while I'm doing this, but all right. So the reason why I'm getting excited here is if I go back to here, I can look at this Java robot class, which is part of java.awt. So I can actually say like, if I just say robot, uh, robot, processing is gonna say like, I don't know what that is. Uh, the class robot does not exist, but, if I now say import java.awt.robot, that error goes away. Now I can say setup. And so the two, the things that you could do with the robot class is two, one, you can track mouse, well, you can do a lot with it, but what I'm interested in it for is it's, it's, a, it's a tool for automation of different aspects of the sort of on the operating system level of what the, us the user is doing. So in relationship to the mouse, I can know at any point where the mouse is. Now you might think though, I could do that anyway in processing, mouse X, mouse Y. Well, no, that's limiting the mouse interaction with this particular window. Same thing with P5. Like I can know what the mouse is doing within a particular canvas or browser window, but on, from the operating system as a whole, I need something else, another layer. And that's what the Java robot class does. In addition, I can move the mouse around. I can automate things if you've ever used it, like, you know, an, uh, an automator, right? I can actually have the mouse move according to logic and code. So ideally, what I wanna do is track all of my mouse movements, train a machine learning model. I guess I could just use like a Markov chain or something if I can't figure out how to do it with a neural network easily. Um, but um, I can then have a machine learning model running to uh, um, tell me where to move the map, to tell, not tell me, to automate the control of the computer. And that's what I would ultimately like to demonstrate. And I do kind of want this to go away. There we go. Um, all right, so let's, let's look at the first steps. And I, I, I have working code that does this. 
over here and I don't remember how to do it, but um, <laughs> let's try to see if I can do it from the reference. So first thing I need to do is make a robot object. So I need to say robot equals new robot. I'll do that in setup and let's run this code. So here's a thing that will happen to you once you break out of processing and start using regular Java. It's like, um, sorry, you, there's, there's a possible thing that could go wrong and you haven't told me what to do if that thing goes wrong. I'm gonna need some more help here. So, and I really have to watch the time, okay. So processing usually will handle all sorts of errors for you behind the scenes and the way the library is written, but often you have to be explicit. So uh, I'm gonna do a very sort of perfunctory job here and I can use a try catch statement and I can just catch any general exception uh, in, uh, exception, I'll call that E, and I'm just gonna say print, print line E. And maybe I'll actually do a system.print.error, so it'll show up in red. Is that not how you do it? Print line error, I have no idea. System.error, print line, I have no idea. All right, never mind. I don't know how to do that. So I'm just gonna say print line. Okay, so not the best, uh, most comprehensive solution, but um, now I can run this sketch and I don't get an error. The robot has been made. So now the next thing I would like to do is, let's look at what some of the functions are. This moves the mouse, mouse press, this presses one or more of the buttons. Um, yeah, and now mouse release, I don't want this. I want to know mouse wheel, key press, key release get pixel color, get screen capture. So you can do screen capture stuff with this. So much you could do. Uh, set auto delay, delay, wait for idle, two string. What am I missing here? There's a thing that I'm doing to get the mouse points and I don't see it here. Um, um, let's look at the methods. Wait for, I, I should have just been looking up here. Hmm. Instant, no, oh, concrete method. Oh, let's look at my code. <laughs> Since especially I'm out of time. Uh, get number of buttons. Start robot. Robot. Track mouse. Oh yeah, mouse. Inf oh, it's, um. so this is actually just, Oh, I don't even really need the robot for what I'm doing. The robot is more to automate, move stuff around. I mean, maybe I need to, I need mouse info because mouse info is a static class that can give me the pointer info. Okay, interesting. So actually what I'm looking for, and I did java.awg.star. So let's look at um, uh, mouse info. Let's look at this. So this is just for the data tracking, <laughs> Java. So I wanna import this also. And in, let's just say, uh, let me just add a, um, an empty draw and then let me add a mouse pressed. So then I wanna get in mouse info, get pointer info uh, and it's static. So I wanna say get pointer info. And what does that give me back? It gives me pointer info. Pointer info equals, by the way, welcome to the most long-winded esoteric programming language you could ever possibly use. Pointer info equals mouse info dot get pointer info. <laughs> Should be spelled with a zero. I'm, I'm imagining, I guess I need uh, import. I mean, I could just do dot star but I'm kind of curious to like figure out exactly what I'm using. And then if I have a pointer info thingy, I can look in this documentation and say get location, which is a point. And a point I'm assuming is also part of AWT. Oh wait, that's, AWT point. How long till I just say AWT star <laughs> before I give up and say that? So now uh, print line point, I, 
I'm assuming there's just like an X in there and a Y. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Now it's not registering it for other places, but um, I don't actually need to just get this. I can, but I can do this during draw. Now I should be able to say, right, as I move the mouse around anywhere on my desktop, see how I'm getting the uh, values there. Okay, well, that's that. Right, so now this is what I'm going to do. I am going to, I'm going to show you kind of how I made this. I am going to say a size. So I'm going to do it, I'm going to scale it down the same way I'm doing there. So I'm going to make a variable called scale, which I'm going to say, let's do this all at a quarter scale. And I also, because I'm going to do some funny business with automating um, the creation of the processing window itself, um, system.er.println, system. Thank you. System .er I didn't see that in the chat till just now. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, if, if you ever put variables into the size function in processing, you need to move that into a function called settings. Otherwise, you could just say size and setup. So I'm going to say display width times scale, display height times scale. I guess I need to floor those because they have to be integers. Um, okay, so that should now, if I run this, right? You can see it's the same. I think I used using the same scale there. Um, then all I need to do is, um, let's put um, background a zero. And then um, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to do point previous. I'm going to draw it as a line because that's what I'm doing up here. Uh, previous equals point. Um, and I will say uh, if previous is not equal to null, draw a line from point x, point y to previous x, previous y. Um, and I need to multiply these by scale to scale it down. And then stroke, make it white. So let's see. I don't know if this is kind of work going to work. But yeah. So now as I move the mouse all around the larger window, it's drawing the path scaled down. And it doesn't matter. Like the processing window goes away. It's doing this behind the scenes no matter what. Like here, I'll put it away and like I'm doing this. Doing this across the bottom. Like <laughs> scroll, scroll, scroll. There you can see. So that's, uh, and, and the only thing that's different here is that I'm using some alpha so that it kind of builds up more over time. Um, just to be clear about this, I could change this to, you know, 0.5. And now, like, you know, I just scaled it down. So this, but the, the, the thing that I really want to do is I want to save that data. So I, I'm kind of running out of time. So I think I would like to sort of like wrap up a bit. Um, but I will just show you here. Um, that in this particular example, I, I've added a bunch of things, but essentially I'm keep, I made my own mouse point class because I wanted to pair the time with the XY. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to use the time, but I thought, uh, I have it. This is the only time I'll ever have the time. I better save it. And I'm not doing anything with clicks. So, um, I want to, I just create a mouse point, which is in the X and Y location along with the time. And you can see this is ultimately the same thing. Like I have this P mouse and mouse objects. And as long as um, there, I also like, I skip it if it's like, hasn't moved for a while maybe. Um, and so just drawing that same thing with alpha. The difference is um, every 100,000 data points, um, I'm, I've, I basically, I have this like array list history of all of the mouse points. And every time I track the mouse, get that pointer info of the X and Y. And I didn't realize, by the way, I could just say point dot X, point dot Y instead of get X and get Y. I make the new mouse point object with that X and Y and the specific timestamp, and then add it to um, that array. 
That way in uh, save data, I just create a, um, I can use the save strings function to essentially save X comma Y comma time. And if I go into, um, I save it as data mouse, and then I also timestamp it as a CSV file. And you can see right now, um, the most recent one that I saved was at today at 11.45 a.m. So it was 10 minutes ago. If I actually click, I think I force it to save if I click on it. So now I just saved a new one at 11.58. And if I look at this in, um, where's my VS code? Um, let me just open up Visual Studio Code manually. Um, and I don't know, I'm opening up a million digits of pi apparently. Uh, if I open up, I don't know where I saved this sketch. Robot demo? No, no, no. Oh yeah, it's in computer mouse, mouse data collect. Um, this is this particular file from 11.58 AM. You can see it's just XY timestamp, XY timestamp. So I'm and amassing all this data. So I can make uh, visualizations of it. I've been working on a heat map uh, visualization. Uh, if anybody wants to help make some visualizations, I'm happy to publish this data. I could just stick it in a GitHub repo. Again, tweet me at Shiftman is probably the best way or join the Coding Train Discord um, and ask one of the mods there. Um, I can, I can, um, I just posted a link to the Coding Train Discord in the chat, hopefully. I don't know if it, if it popped up, but maybe somebody, it's just thecodingtrain.com slash Discord. Um, so I would love some sort of help. I'm, I'm like recording the video about all this stuff this weekend. So, you know, if you want to make an interesting visualization, I could maybe include it. Uh, you know, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to be taking advantage of everyone's like generosity here. So, um, but if, if it interests you, I would welcome um, any contributions. Um, so what else do I wanted to say about this? Um, yeah, oh, let me, before I go, because it's noon and I need to wrap up, I do really, I haven't tested out what happened and the, like some major issues. I think, I can't remember who it was. Somebody in the chat said, watch out if you start writing software to take over your mouse. How do you gain control back? <laughs> and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, oh, well, it's it's okay. I've, I've, I'm going to do all the things that I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to work on my script. Um, let's see. Let's go back to what's open here. Okay, I can close this one. Let's go back to the robot class and I'm looking for mouse move. Move the mouse pointer to given screen coordinates. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I say uh, X equals 100, Y equals 100. Then I'm going to in draw. I'm gonna um, get rid of this tracking stuff for a second. I'm going to say x plus equal random negative 100 100 y plus equal random negative 100 100. No no no, that's way too crazy. 10, 10, 10, 10, and then robot mouse move x y. <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, expect, okay, I need uh, to convert these to integers. This is a random, a random mouse walk. It would like to control this computer using accessibility. Ah, so I have to grant it control. That's interesting. Uh, let me just go over here just because I don't know what I'm revealing here. Allow the apps. I'm going to allow process. What I'm just doing is I'm in the security and privacy um, window and I'm clicking to allow processing control. And we'll see if that does the trick. I've already, oh my God, I had have lost my mouse. Oh yeah, it's doing it. <laughs> So I gave it control and you can see the mouse is up there in the corner stuck moving around. Can I hit escape? Okay, good. I can hit escape. So let's go with um, in setup. Uh, 
I mean, I would really like, I should use one of my like steering behaviors examples or flocking behavior, but let's do display with divided by two. And display height divided by two. Let's make it uh, move very, very little. And hopefully right now when I hit run, it doesn't just be in the center. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> There's my mouse, automated move, moving. <laughs> this is like the least interesting um, automate moving the mouse example that I could do. Let's, um, ah, okay, let's, let's, just because I want to have something slightly more interesting, I could use Perlin noise. That actually would be a great one. Let's just do that. Let's just try Perlin noise real quick. Um, and then, so this um, X offset is zero, Y offset is zero. And it's actually not really right because I'm not gonna be using two dimensional noise. It's fine. <laughs> just bear with me. Uh, and now in draw, float, um, X equals noise X, X off times display with Y equals noise Y off display height. And then, I mean, there'd be a X off. Just if, if you have no idea what I'm doing, I would suggest my videos on Pearl and noise, but let's see what happens now. Okay, that's, oh, right, 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 right. It's all on the diagonal because I need to look at different parts of the noise space. Here we go. I have automated the movement of the mouse. This is driving me crazy that there's this giant processing window that opens up. Um, can I, I, there's no no canvas, but I can do size. I think the minimum is probably this. And I could alt tab now, so I could go to the open of the, like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Welcome to my automated mouse moving. I never need to operate the computer again. This is the end of today's live stream, the grand finale. So what I really would like to do is train a machine learning model to follow my mouse movements and then recreate them. Can I get some help with that? <laughs> we'll see how far I get, but this does work. And I can actually have it click also, which is quite dangerous. The, the good thing I'm doing right now is I'm not having it click. So it just uh, only is like Perl and noise random movements. So now the question is, how do I stop this? If Because I've hit escape, I'm not in the processing. Uh, and um, Abe is um, giving me a link to um, people who have done kind of like auto clickers to beat various games and things. There's so, this could, this could, there's a really, really quite far. And I, I realized I was completely forgetting to use this mouse the whole time. But look, can I match it? Not really. Can I, now I'm going to use like servo motors in this. So this moves automatically. <laughs> nice game for my cat, says Sav. That's a great, um, a great, um, <laughs> a great uh, tip. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm done for today. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope this was interesting to you. Um, I want to make sure I capture, I, um, I'm going to have to like gain control back over my mouse. Oh, what's actually really interesting is now I'm collect, oh my God, stop, stop, stop everybody. I love this. Hold on. I can use a gain control over my mouse. I can't get it back. Come on, you can do it. No, there we go. No, not that one. There, this one. Escape. Okay. This is what I'm going to do now. I just had the most wonderful idea. I am going to run the data collection fresh and then uh, move that up here. And I know I've got a little bit, this can come down. This can be closed. Now, let me run this code. 
And now I'm collecting the data from the automated mouse movement. <laughs> Yay! Because why not? Thank you. Uh... <laughs> oh, I don't hear the sound anymore. But I think I'm playing a very loud sound effect. My, my headphone battery died. Okay, it is 1210. I have got to go. My children have to be picked up from school at one o'clock. Um, cannot, the cat should be chasing the mouse. There's so many metaphors here that I think could work. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to put on some music, get myself cleaned up here and out of here. Um, I think maybe what I'll actually do though is just leave this running. Um, I'm going to, oh wait, I can still use this mouse. As my outro screen, I'm just going to take away my camera. So I'm gone now, um, and um, I am going to um, put on some music and uh, leave this running, and I will see you all uh, next, hopefully next Friday. I'm trying to do live streams on Friday for the next um, foreseeable future, and um, please come and join um, check out the Computer Mouse Conference. Um, Someone can post a link to the Computer Mouse Conference in the chat. Um, uh, there's, I think there's probably ways you could participate or still watch the conference. I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah. Okay, here we go. Back to uh, my uh, music, and there we go. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm Muting do my mic, dot, but I'm, I'm still do, here. This, this I'm dot, reading your chat message. I'm going to do this dot, this dot, I'm going to do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song. this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song. this dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. Somebody compose that song for me.
I feel just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's going to be okay today. Dream is not broken. It has not frozen. This is a, this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're going to do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. Syntax, I forgot. Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again. All sorts of text generation analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is, yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I really lose my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens and